8.2, number 27, 29, and we'll probably also fit in number 31. So here we're going to be doing some cube roots instead, and we're going to simplify them. But we're going to use the same basic properties, that we can um, you know, do the root separately for different factors that are inside the radical. And simplify means perform the radical as completely as possible. And then we'll also deal with variables in there. So first we want to simplify cube root of 56. Well, let's rewrite this in factored form so we can see if there are any perfect cubes in there. So that'd be square root or cube root of 8 times 7. And then I notice that cube root of 8 is a perfect cube. So I can either do the shortcut and just pull it out and say I'm going to take the cube root of 8 and make that a 2. And I'd be left over with cube root of 7, and there's nothing else to do there. So that's sort of the shortcut way to do it. Um, we could also write it out with separate radicals, if that's easier to see. So let's take cube root 8 times 7 and break it up into the two separate radicals, cube root of 8 times cube root of 7. All right, so that's the same property we were using for square roots. Cube root of 8 is 2, and can't do anything to cube root of 7, so that 9th. Well, remember for square roots, if we had the square root of x to the fourth, we just did divide by 2. So it's x squared. Well, we're going to do the same thing. When we look at the cube roots, and it doesn't really matter what kind of radical you have, you always want to do divide the power by the root. So if we have x to the 9 and divide by 3, that gives us x cubed. And that makes sense because x cubed times itself three times, all right, because we're talking cube roots, so we need to do it times itself three times, would give us x to the 9th. Because when you multiply the same bases, you add up add up the exponents. So we'd have 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 9. So that'd be the answer for that one. You know, if we had cube root of x to the um, about 12, then we would say, well, that comes out to be x to the 12 divided by 3 is a whole number, so that gives us x to the 4th. If we didn't have a whole number, we'd want to break it into factors that gave us a whole number. So let me get a new sheet here. Let's say we had cube root x to the eighth. All right, well, 8 divided by 3 doesn't work out perfectly. And this is different from doing the cube root of 8. Right, because now it's in the exponent. So whereas the cube root of 8 equals 2, if the 8 is in the exponent, it's completely different. Then we are dividing the power by the root instead. So cube root of 8, I would break it up and say cube root of the highest power that's divisible by 3 would be 6 without going over 8. So it's x to the 6 times, and there would be 2 left over because 6 plus 2 gives us 8. Then I could say, okay, I know that the cube root of x to the 6 is going to be, and do x to the 6 divided by 3. That's going to come out to be x squared. Then I'd have cube root of leftover x squared, like that. And let's see, there's a new one we can do here. How about number 31? Uh, which also is an x to the 8. You know, I'm going to change it to be something than 8 because we just did 8. Let's do cube root of 72 x to the, how about 16? That's not divisible by 3, so that'll give us some practice. Well. First, I want to deal with the 72 and take it from there. So 
let's factor things out and you know what we must well go ahead and factor the x to the sixteenth and give it the power that we wanted to have so seventy two is eight times nine and i want to use that because eight is a perfect cube all right so there are other factorings that work for seventy two but this is the best one to use times the highest power here that would be divisible by three let's see twelve divided by three is four 15 divided by 3 is 5. 15 is closer to 16. So I'm going to take x to the 15th with 1 left over of x because 15 plus 1 gives me 16. And now I'm going to identify who are my perfect cubes. 8 is a perfect cube and x to the 15 is a perfect cube. So let's pull out the perfect cubes. So I'm going to just rewrite what we have so we can pull things out. Alright, so this guy comes out as a 2, because a cube root of 8 is 2. This guy comes out, cube root of x to the 15, do 15 divided by 3, power divided by root. And that gives me an x to the 5th. So on the outside, we get 2 x to the fifth, and then the 9 and the x are just leftovers. They stay inside the cube root, and we don't do anything to them. 